Okay, oh, we're okay. we're we're live. Yeah, I have we're to live. I have to give permission for it. It says you're live streaming. Oh no, got it. Leave the meeting. Leave the meeting. Run away. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we start off, ladies and gentlemen, with a oh nice office. <laughs> What's that redheaded cryptid? <laughs> I like that. Can you change your name to like redheaded cryptid? Yes, and- yes. How do I do that on this? <laughs> oh God, I need to change my name. <laughs> Rename. That's amazing. Uh, original guide to Spooky Empire. OG. Oh, you know how we roll. So before anything else, we'll get into the typical disclaimer. No, we are not official Spooky Empire staff. If you're gonna bitch about something we talk about, and it's not G-rated stuff here, folks. Uh, don't bitch to PD and Gina and whoever else. Uh, we are the fan perspective. Anything official automatically go to spookyempire.com and affiliated social media. Uh, we say fuck shit, put the kids to bed. And pussy. And that. Yes, exactly. And speaking of which, the, the queen of glory pussy. holes. My man. Yeah. Pussy. Speaking of, 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 uh, of pussy, here we go. Carly's. Everyone say hi to Carly. Hi, guys. I'm back. It's been a bad month, but here I am. <laughs> well that's what we're here from spooky family we get together we laugh at people we make fun of shit yep mostly ourselves like we can't you guys can't even give a shade for making fun of other things because trust me <laughs> the <laughs> level of horror we direct towards ourselves is unparalleled this is true we are incredibly self-deprecating speaking of which what are you drinking uh today i have my i haven't had it in like a month and a half but um i've got my tiki rum mai tai by cut water uh de- delicious so, um, yeah, I need some fuel to get through the rest of my evening. This is the highlight of my evening, and then it's all going to be work and work. Jesus and some Christ, more work. that's depressing as fuck. Yeah, I know. This is where we're at. I'm, I'm like, as Bo Burnham says, I'm at an ATL, at all-time low for my mental health. But here I am. <laughs> you fucking love it. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm just, I'm dandy. I swore he was going to tell us, oh, you know what? I didn't actually live stream. None of this is actually being recorded. <laughs> Look, you know, the look, way this show goes, anything's possible. You get what you pay for as far as producers, okay? And we've paid nothing. Literally. Real quick. Hi, Eric. How you doing? How you doing? Eric, Please. hey! We gotta bring Eric on the show. And, yeah, and yeah, we do. Eric, yeah, Eric, you do need to make an, an appearance at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so what are you drinking, Rob? Um, I, you know what? I have, oh, and AJ's here. AJ, thanks for popping <gasps> in before Monday. Hi, the buddy. Although you might not want to watch that tonight. Who knows? Anyway, I am drinking um my 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 bougie win dixie lemon flavored uh sparkling water and i'd use the very less okay. I, had like, I had well jesus christ woman sorry and, and i and i topped it off with a little bit of gin just because i'm a lush yeah Good. all right you fancy what do you think you're better than us think you're better than us because you're drinking your seltzer waters that's right yeah. that's right lord well, you know, twelve to three dollars. Rob, though, <sighs> why why are we streaming from from the men's bathroom? There is there a reason for this? As we're all shit. I, I, I consider myself surrounded by piss and shit on a daily basis, so I want to express. That I take to... that personal for Demi. I, how dare? <laughs> I think that's fucking awesome. But actually, you know what? This this ties into spooky actually because that is something that is a good PSA. When actually we're going to talk about guests in a second. What? Yeah, I'm I'm here. I'm trying to meet uh, Sean Patrick Flannery. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, please don't. I need a story me. behind that. I'm not oh, a big there, fan there when one. I met him in person. There is a story. Yeah, I'm not a big fan when I met him in person. He has a lot of social anxiety and is not very nice to talk to. He's he's. A lot of maintenance. Sean Patrick Flannery is a lot of maintenance. Do you think it's the cocaine or the fake tan? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And the oiling of allegedly, the ship, so we don't get in trouble. The alleged, alleged cocaine. Allegedly. Alleged. Yeah. But uh, but no. It, and I've seen so many people do this. Unfortunately, it's it's when a celebrity goes in the bathroom, someone will go in there to ask for their autograph or try to get a picture with them. What don't the hell? Them. Okay, listen. That can. I am autistic and I know better than that. What the hell is wrong with people? Are you kidding me? You know what? It brings up an interesting question. If you had every guy who went, who was a guest at Spooky lined up at the urinals, who has the biggest dick? <laughs> Lance, probably, now that we're thinking about him. But I'm sorry, I just remembered. I had a friend who went on tour of Backstreet Boys and he likes to send me videos when he's in the toilet. That's why I kind of disassociated. I was like, wait, that did happen. <laughs> he's in the toilet. He's filming straight ahead of him. So I'm not seeing any of what's going on with him. 
And then he's slowly mouthing him. He's like, I'm just trying to take a shit in peace. And literally all the boys are in the bathroom being like, because ah, ah, the acoustics are better, but it was the entirety of the Backstreet Boys. And I was like, why am I, why am I uh, privy to this? No, everyone <laughs> else is. I won't tell you who told me that story, but yeah, it was pretty funny. No, it's the English. But, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've seen it a number of times as I remember, uh, and I don't remember, it might've been Sean Patrick Quinn. I don't recall exactly who, but uh, we were in line the first time Bruce Campbell was at Mayhem. And I want to say that was 2013, 14. And we're in line and uh, somebody uh, had gone into the bathroom and literally people got out of line to go in the bathroom, try to get a picture with him. What? I'm going to, I'm going to just, in, okay. I understand that I'm admitting to pre-assault right now. But if I see anybody doing that at a spooky empire, I'm going to tag your nuts and or pussy. I'm just going to be like, oh, catch it real fast. Oh, and then, we get tasers? Group tasers? Yeah. I like this. That's ridiculous. Let people eat, pee, and sleep in private. Please leave them alone. It's, that, yeah. it just, it's so fucking tacky, man. I mean, we can't go over. As the con mother, you've gone over and over and over for fucking over a decade about con etiquette and things to do. And it should Nobody be. Nobody listens. They're not going to listen this time either. I listen. I believe you. By the way, um, Eric also wanted to share two stories. First of all, he voted for Matthew Lillard as the. Uh, oh yeah, that's the, a big dick energy. Oh, I will yeah. agree with that. Yes, he he might be packing the most. And also, I, I follow them into the bathroom so they can autograph my butt cheeks in private. What about your actual butthole? Can you get it? I hear if you speak friend, you get to enter there. Hmm. <laughs> I like this. Should not be at life. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I like. Uh, the, oh. some philosophy some good philosophical discussion i like that <laughs> also uh butch patrick's gonna get my vote okay Ooh. no i think it's tara reed it could be tara reed <laughs> or it, honestly i think it could be bad bet possibly you know so actually i do have a line but i can't say it because it would possibly be uh violating confidential information but oh yeah, yeah. don't do that yeah but, oh, I know which one it is. Yeah, I'm you do. Told that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I've, I've I've seen it. It's huge. Yeah. So big penis, big yep. veiny penis. This Folks, is where we're not too veiny, honestly. Like very aesthetically pleasing. Like I could do a Renaissance painting of said penis, and it would go up in a museum. It was gorgeous. Anaconda, folks. We're talking Amazon snake of some variety. And the thing is, Robbie knows now, and she can't not say it when said person is around. And I'm like, Robbie, please stop. I was just probably not supposed to yeah, say no, anything. Oh, no, she, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so, big penis, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, so speaking yeah. of big penis, we have some other guests in Spooky Empire, we don't do, we? We do, and one who I think actually could contend for largest penis. Yeah. Because, you know, he's, he's a big guy. I mean, first, uh, Tyler Maine, uh, Rob, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween, Michael Myers. Uh, personally, I think he's like the best saber tooth ever. Not that Luke's I hungry. did run into him once in Ebor, and he was very nice. I didn't know who he was until I'd already passed him, and my friends were freaking out because out of costume, he doesn't. I mean, he's tall, but there's so sure. many tall people yeah, because we have guy. people don't realize Tampa is a wrestling like mecca. We get a lot of those well, guys you know, in UFC he fighters. Was, before he was an actor, he was a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was Big Sky. Mm -hmm. I watched him wrestle once. He wasn't that good. <laughs> well, either way, he was still very nice when I bumped into him physically on the street in Ebor, and he was very nice to me. So, yeah, it's, I, I met him, and uh, my son dressed as young Michael Myers, and he got a picture with him, and he was super, super cool. Love that. Yeah. I yeah. am not in norm for this, and I think Robbie agrees with me. I enjoy the Michael Myers films, the Halloween films by Rob Zombie. Well, not you, a lot of people do. Wrong, but it's okay. It's fine. Well, I don't like the originals. I like the brand, brand new one that just came out like two years wrong. ago. But the other ones, I'm like, God, would anything fucking happen already? It's so boring. And you know I love pacing, and I like stuff to take its time. But with those original ones, I'm like, I'm not scared of him. I hit that dude in the dick and then stab him in the eye. <laughs> That's what happened to him, though, isn't it? Didn't he get stabbed? <laughs> kind of is. Something like that, yeah. So we know spoilers. it's a successful move. Fucking spoilers. <laughs> oh, yeah, 40-year-old spoilers. My bad. <laughs> You know there's going to be somebody. I <laughs> had not seen the originals. I was working my way backwards. <laughs> yeah, somebody fucking bring it up to me. We'll fight. I'm in the mood. <laughs> but it's yeah, a Tyler punchy Bain night, ladies back. and gentlemen. A punchy night indeed. Yes, it is. Violence. We choose violence here. <laughs> I sure fucking do today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tyler Bain is really awesome. So, I mean, if you're a fan of Halloween films, or even the X-Men, honestly. I mean, honestly, I, wrestling too. Like, shit. Wrestling? 
Even yeah. though apparently he's not good. I don't know. He was big. I mean, it, ultimately, there's a point where if you're like 6'10", you don't really need to be good because you're 6'10 and huge. You can literally do this and just hold someone back. Well, there's a, there's an, there's an old joke. You can't teach someone to be 6'10". <laughs> I think I heard that joke. Yeah, in a bar sometimes. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the other guest, uh, absolutely amazing and super excited that he's coming back, Lance Henriksen. They, I mean, Robert what a Abel gem. Was great. But Lance Henriksen, I mean, Pumpkinhead, Near Dark, Alien, just every other like small indie horror film. He's in the background somewhere. You're like, wait a second. Was the dad just played? By Lance yeah. Henriksen? He's such an amazing actor. Yeah, he, he really is. And he's a super nice guy. I was fortunate enough to meet him out at uh, Texas and Frightmare years and years and years ago. Was but it Aliens 3 he was in? No, I think he was in two. Yeah, no, I think he was think also in three. I think he showed up in a bunch of them. He might have. Okay. You hey, know what? Google. I, <laughs> yeah. If only we had a way to look. But he, the, the, the best right Lance Hendrickson movie is Near Dark, one of the most yes. underrated vampire movies. Period. And I believe it is streaming right now on Shutter for yes, those who have yes, not it, seen it. It, it yeah, just popped up at the beginning of this month. So if you haven't seen Near Dark, first of all, you're stupid. Second of all, you can rectify that. True. Yeah, you can rectify that, and I will stop calling you stupid, and that probably means a lot to you. All right, there's an entire Xenopedia which I was not aware of. Oh, Don't shit. go down the hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's That's an aliens, which is two. He was in two, three, and a AVP, so he's oh, been in three of them. I knew he was in more than for one. The record, Boris just confirmed for us that he is in three. So if you, as you did, thank also, you, Boris. Also, also um, we did have another vote for largest penis at the show, Tony Todd. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm willing to find out. That, that's from Bones. <laughs> and Bones said, have you ever seen the size of his hands? One can only imagine about his job. Just like, oh. he's, that's, that's he's, and he's not going to be there, is he? Was he announced? Because he, I would no. love to meet him. He is a horror icon. Oh, yeah. He's a Shakespearean actor as well, yes. which is when you yes, know he's that. He's so good at everything. I love, too, when his voice pops up in anything, because I'm like, Tony Todd. And people are like, no, it's not, because in Hellfest, he was the voiceover person in all of the entertainment area. Yeah. And then he was the guy on stage. And I was like, I'm sorry, was I right again? It's like I've seen a thousand billion horror films. Suck my dick. <laughs> I am loving this show tonight. Oh my God. But, no filter. <laughs> I, I'm okay with this. This is good. And, and we're still kind of soberish. And this is why you're one of my dearest friends, both of you, because you can take me however I come. <laughs> Three thousand percent. And this is why we say spooky family people. This is why yeah. we. Say. So, but Lance Henriksen is going to be there. So, uh, I actually we have a friend of ours who actually named his son Bishop. That's he awesome. Had, he had Lance sign his birth certificate, so I'm like, that's really fucking cool. But what that's Lance didn't realize is he was signing under fathered by. <laughs> <laughs> Starts getting notices in the mail. What do you mean, back child support? <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, these are the two uh, guests that, that they've added. Um, somebody that w I would have loved to have seen, although I don't know if he's actually ever done a horror movie, and unfortunately he just passed recently, Biz Marquis. Now, the reason we bring up Ooh. Marquis, not only because he's awesome, Rob, you said you look like you want to say something. I was just going to sing, but then I thought better of it because <laughs> I've heard me sing. And frankly, Biz Marquis sings better than I do. So, fuck. That's a very scary thought. But it's I mean, uh, Biz Marquis uh, had did that children's show, Yo Gabba Gabba. Y'all know about that. And that's like children's show and stoner show. Huh. Yeah. Mostly Gen X show. Because I mean, the guy from Devo was on there. Biz Marquis was on there. Jack Black was on there. Was he the main guy in Yo Gabba Gabba? No, he, was, he, oh. he would just show up and teach kids to rap, basically. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, the reason I bring it up is because uh, Petey is known to have had a DJ Lance Rock outfit. And I think in honor of Biz Marquis, he needs to bring the DJ Lance Rock outfit to Spooky in honor. Agreed. Unanimously so. passed. Bing, bing, bing. Yes. So absolutely. But so Rob, what, what, what would you say your favorite Biz Marquee uh, moments, media, song, whatever is? Well, okay. As far as songs, let's not pretend. Look, I, I love Biz. He's a great personality. Let's not pretend anyone knows anything other than you got what I need. No, they that's, don't. That's, that's the only song. But, but it, where it's, I. It, no, it's called Just a Friend. That's yeah, okay, you. You got it wrong. You see, see you I don't right. even know the name of the song. I just know the lyrics. So yeah, cor correct. Um. You know what? He was a very charming individual on Celebrity Fit Club on VH1. Um, 
I'm sorry. What time machine did we use to watch this? <laughs> it's a, a that show is available on Pluto TV for those of you who just. I need wanna... to download Pluto. You're right. Oh my There's God. so many good horror films on Pluto that are streaming for if you free. Can, if you can put up with the commercials, it's See, an am- I mean, the library the they have is no fucking patience. amazing. Rob, all of us are so good at just randomly disassociating. You can do it for a commercial break. Just yeah, that's and gone. <laughs> Yeah, no, seriously, so Pluto TV, the everything that's on there, it's got the it's got a better library than Netflix, any other pay service. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's like so if you can just tolerate the commercials, and I know, come on, folks, we were brought up on fucking commercials. You can you can revert. I'm too good for commercials now, damn it. All of our personalities during the 80s were produced by those commercials. Let's be know. honest. One way or the other, that's how we got our personality was 80s commercials. Okay. That's true. Just to let you a little know uh, on our producer here, this very afternoon, we were having a conversation and there was a picture. Uh, a friend had asked me about, oh, what horror movie is this from? And it was a picture of a grocery store aisle with, with cereals. And I'm starting to think, Rob comes in, he goes, oh, let me look at the, the cereal. Oh, Tony the Tiger, I recognize that incarnation from 1982. And, and I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Did he Rain Man the yes. cereal aisle? Yes. Look, I have Rain studied cereal really in depth i was like okay look there's fruity marshmallow krispies those were introduced in 1983 they were discontinued in 86 so that's the that's the time okay listen the autism in me (laughs) recognizes the autism in you i study cereal too but of the killer variety so very different i i don't think anyone would argue i'm the most wholesome person on the show so absolutely i've (laughs) devoted my energies Mm -hmm. towards cereal and saturday morning cartoons love it god but but yeah so but um what the fuck were we talking about this is somehow related to bismarcky i don't remember how about uh, how he well, passed other, away other, no, other, other, other things but yes celebrity fit club he was on i think the first or second season Woo! of it we're talking about and he you know what he took the program seriously he lost some weight good for biz didn't stay off but it yeah, usually it doesn't when you are on some sort never mind i'm not going to get into the secrets of the the dieting world <laughs> no, this is not the podcast for it i'll be on someone yeah, else's no, podcast no, for that no behind the scenes for that yeah <laughs> but uh, uh recently we also had the opportunity uh some of us in actually a couple people in the chat actually we had a little spooky family uh get together at cocktails and screams which now, really i hate awesome. that i missed you guys yeah but we, yeah, we, we were need sad. to have a moment for the dress because you look so fucking good. I was at, I was with my lovely friend, Kitty. We went to the Bombshells DC um, reunion. There are a bunch of lovely girls, which you don't hear me usually say about cosplayers, but you know that group we were looking for <laughs> of cosplayers? You know the one we've been looking for? Like that legendary mythical bring the ring to Mordor? It's those girls, Demi. They're actually that nice and talented and sweet. But I'm at the thing and I just start going, ah! <laughs> screaming because you look so good in that fucking costume. That I was like, what the fuck? And like freaking out. You did not let me know what you were doing. And I was shocked. I in it, it's mwah, chef's kiss. You Thank tall, you. beautiful bitch. And I that, know you, you are not. Well, everybody's tall compared to you. That's You're... what I was going to say. I know you don't think of yourself as tall, but for me, I'm always like, bitch. Like, yeah. like right up to you. <laughs> But no, this happened to be a, a last minute costume. You know, we threw a bunch of spunk together. Eric and Danielle were kind enough to invite us out. And I was like, you know what? We, we need it because the world is fucking shit right now. We all know that. So let's stay in our little spooky bubble any way we can possibly get it. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool. AJ was there and Terry was there. And it was so cool because while Robbie, like, you know, Robbie, Robbie was there. Um, and it was so cool because it's like the mundanes had no idea what to make of us. <laughs> Oh, I'll I feel tell like you, they're funny. already confused when they accidentally walk into that bar, and yeah, then like, wait, and we're right getting the bar, so people are walking in and seeing like these punk out, of, you know, straight out of Mad Max, and they're like, what mm-hmm. the fuck? Beautiful. And wow. then the person that gives the entire internet a boner is standing at the bar. They're like, wait, hold on, I've got a confused a Danielle, scare boner. Yes, yes, she does yeah. that. No, I'm talking about <laughs> you. Because you were you were dressed as that super sexy tall vampire people want to be sat on by. I, I felt, uh, do people want, okay, I didn't know that, I didn't know. Well, there's like a whole crushing thing with her where they draw her ass to be this big and guys are just like, Ugh. Interesting. Today we can I, talk about all I, I, I will toss one other thing out there. Uh, Robbie could have co- gone home with the couple that was next to us at the bar counter. Oh my God, yes. Because after she, she at one point she, you know, she went to the restroom and the, the, the girl next to me, she, is that your girlfriend? 
And I was like, oh, no, no, just a friend. Oh, my, my, my boyfriend and I were talking, like, she looks so good. <laughs> and then they did this to her. They went, eh, and they licked her, and they're like, ours. They smelled <laughs> her seat after she got up. So, you know, it was. That's, Robbie's that's... pretty damn sexy. I get it. But if anybody <laughs> goes after her before I get the chance to make sweet, sweet love to Robbie, I swear to God. <laughs> It was fucking beautiful, man. And I, I do need to give a shout out to Cocktails and Screams because they just recently added, uh, I believe it's called The Craft, the, the secret room in the back. Did you go? Did you have a drink? We did. We did. We went in there and it's just, it's fascinating. Not only just the decor, because the guys that, that do Cocktails and Screams, they did joysticks and some of you have seen like, uh, what was it? Uh, the Goonies, the VIP room they did with the mm -hmm. Goonies. The detail is, is, the craftsmanship is fucking outstanding. They went 3,000% in yes. this room. Did you get to have a drink? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it is hands down. Because she's like, what's bothering you? I was like, oh, I have crippling anxiety, autism, and back pain. And she made me a drink. Um, and I'm not even, I consider myself a professional alcoholic. I'm not even putting on any airs. It was the best drink I have had in the entirety of my life. I have never had a better cocktail than there. They, it's, they, it's you know, they did, they have a real interesting, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say all the secrets they have, but they have an interesting way of selecting the ingredients for your drink. Should you choose to have them made a, a very amazing it's custom drink. School. It's basically roll of the dice and they just pick and choose. But not, and they don't use dice. They no. use something much, much more. Uh, cool. Is that an off the pod type thing for you to tell me? Tell me later. I uh, want to know. You know what? Screw it. They use chicken bones. Yes. You roll chicken bones. Oh, they roll chicken bones. I was like, yeah. in my drink? Ew. But then <laughs> basically what, what what's on the bones, and then they'll they'll make you a, a cocktail based on that. And so they're rune they're rune reading for yes. cocktail ingredients. Yes. Well, whatever it was, whatever Baba Yaga shit they did, they nailed it. And I want that drink on tap in my house just drop my sorrows ah. it was really fucking good they had some like really mm -hmm. like they had pine in there and they had like basil and then tequila and, and just all these and how, like, thing, yeah. how, but all the drinks turned out really well yeah i was out with um a, for a month and a half ago for megan murder's birthday and i was with um a friend of the podcast friend of the live stream chris uh was with me yes. being my escort and we both had delicious drinks that's so cool that's so absolutely yeah i think yeah. aj got the drink of the of the night even the bartender was just like wow i've never made this before this is amazing <laughs> but it was it was some sort of blackberry fizz AJ. drink i i don't exactly remember it now but i mean well, that was that got the rage next like. time i will be joining you and i will bring yeah. kitty who always supports us and we still have to make that connection with you guys to be on her podcast dementia yes, because absolutely. it's women talk about horror that's right and i just did their uh their lovely logo so check it out fucking cool yeah 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 so if you y'all need a logo done or anything we got your girl right here Hit please her up. She's i like to good, eat <laughs> <laughs> so we had another interesting thing uh apparently up in uh pennsylvania where the living dead thing with the mall and all all that um apparently buffalo uh, buffalo bill's house is up there and they are doing a booth at uh, joe bob who again friend of the show uh joe bob's first what is it uh joe bob's jamboree something like that at a drive-in yep. up there yeah bob's got it. yeah no it's it is it is the first annual joe bob's jamboree at the mahoning drive-in in lehighton pennsylvania say that this one more time because the way you said that word was pretty <laughs> lehighton? yeah i just like the way rob said it Almost I'm not, not even kidding. I liked Enjoy. it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. you. Someone isolate that sound for me and I'll turn it into my ringtone for when Rob ever calls me. <laughs> yes, because Rob does that so often. Mm -hmm. I don't call anyone. <laughs> no, none of us. None of us want to be on the phone. We're like, great. Can yeah. you just video chat me? I don't want to. Well, I'll see you no, soon. No It'll be a year. I don't want to do it. <laughs> But uh, but no, it, it's really cool to see like a bunch of our, our horror friends and everything getting together and Buffalo Bills was was there and a friend of the show and apparently we've got some information that they're looking to open in August. That's so soon. So exciting. I am so psyched to see and everything they've done to the house is so fucking amazing. I can't wait to see the grand opening. I hope they I have mean, something big they, for they were doing so much hard work and they were putting together so many quality experiences for the guests who are going to come and enjoy that space, which eventually will be us. Yeah. We'll oh, eventually yeah. plan a road trip and it'll eventually be us. Dude, yeah. we'll get a Winnebago and we'll drive up. Don't <gasps> you tease me with a Winnebago that I could be serial killed in. We, we, we totally could make a movie we out could of this. Serial I've seen we could, we could do the killing, we though. Movie out of this? Yeah, we could. What'd you say, Divi? 
I said, no, we could, they, there's been shittier movies than this. We could totally make a movie out of this. Yeah, let's do it. I watch them all the time on Shudder. Can yeah, get- so than the post movie that Carly had me watch. Uh-uh, that was Robbie first, and I did enjoy it, but the ones that I have, we if we're, if we're going to do a corner of stuff later for movies we recommend, I've got a list okay. of, of movies I recommend right now. No, absolutely. We, we, we do that towards uh, later in the show. Um, also, one of the things, if you guys haven't seen already, uh, Cult of Cthulhu, we're actually gathering Friday, uh, right when Spooky starts. We're gonna, The Cthulhu cultists are getting together in honor of David. Bless. We miss greatly. Yes. What is and, it, um, We recently just did a uh, an interview on full frontal nudity. I mean, f- full frontal nerdity. Jesus nerdity, Christ, honey. Bro. Nerdity. That's... Yeah. Full frontal nerdity. I mean, I'm not here to judge either. They're you different do whatever, shows. Do whatever yeah, makes shows. you happy. Mm-hmm. But Rob, so you want to tell them about that interview? Okay, so yeah, we uh, we they invited us on the on their on their podcast. Uh, they actually, and one of the one of the hosts on the show, Kim, actually, you know, was apparently a big fan and remembered the Cult of Cthulhu from years ago. At, I guess at Mayhem when we were giving out cookies, and you know, based that's on that's exactly that, how you get people to join your cult. It's yeah. it's it's a time honored. Uh, it's a proven method. So they asked us to be on and we just, you know, we had a good time. We, we talked a little bit about the history of the cult, uh, we, a little bit about uh, Lovecraft and Cthulhu and also throwing out our favorite movies ge- or what games we're playing, what movies we're watching, stuff like that. Good show. Uh, we, we had a good time. Unfortunately, while, while I do recommend you check out their webcast, their, their podcast, not a webcast, it's a podcast. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an entertaining show. The hosts all, you know, they vibe really well together. I sounded like I was a little boy stuck in the bottom of a well due to my audio. So are you not a little boy stuck in the bottom of a well? I'm a big boy stuck in the bottom of a well. Nice, hot. Yeah, we can sell that. (laughs) It's it's, still give it a listen to. We recommend some good stuff, and we're gonna make sure you link that so I can listen to it because I definitely do. Uh, I love listening to you guys. She's so foolish. They they had a. a, I'm here now, aren't I, bitch? It's it's a. I heard the call. If you're in any kind of like Orlando nerd culture, they had some really other cool guests prior to us. Hard to believe they could even top us, but they okay. had like the owners of Arcade Monsters. Yeah. Um, you guys have got a better nerd culture than we do, hands down. So I'll agree yeah. there. Yeah. See? Yeah. Good things. Yeah, you're right. But uh, but yeah, Full Frontal Nerdity, we'll share the link. And we also talk about uh, the, the Cult of Cthulhu, the get together that we're going to have Friday at Spookies, you know, and we're staking our claim. We're leading off the zombie walk. I mean, even if we're not supposed to, we're going to do it anyway because oh, we're they, they moved away the people who did that and they can suck a nut. Like, don't take it so seriously. Come on. You guys lead it off. Um, you know where I'll be during Spooky, so you guys are going to have to live uh, for me, extra for me, and then video chat me and stuff because oh, I will be. Yeah, you, know, you got work. That's like fucking crazy. You know, people in the bathroom and shit. Oh, that's 100%. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, and make sure it's Backstreet Boys singing at the top of their lungs. Joey Fatone, Everybody. you know, I, I I actually have seen Joey Fatone actually posted something on his Instagram not too long ago of him on the toilet, which was huh. fucking- well, he's in sync, not Backstreet, so there's not as classy. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Gun to my head, couldn't sing either of their songs. Would have no idea. I can. No apologies. <laughs> but that was oh, but a- goth people have to follow a very certain bit of guidelines, or they're not goth. All these gatekeeping bitches can also suck a nut. I yeah, don't. Ladies care. and gentlemen, the nuts <laughs> shall be sucked, and the titties, and titties is yeah. And then there's something I just want to give a shout out real quick to uh, Dare to Wear Clothing. If for some of you that remember the. <laughs> I fucking love that. Um, I'll give a shout out, a clothing shout out. You can get this at uh, our favorite, Prometheus Esoterra, because that's where I got this from. And uh, it's got a hoodie and it's long sleeve and it's crop topped and I love buying it. I'm also going to hopefully be selling clothes to them. We're designing a line right now in hopes to sell it at the location. Ooh. Yep, I'm having a meeting about that tomorrow. So if you have any ideas, Demi, that you might want to see or Rob, let a bitch know. Rob needs a thong done already in the mail i, I need i need goth it. thongs that's uh what why why not i like it goth yeah. thongs seriously that black <laughs> unicorn thong you know it's... yeah i think the original goth thong was worn by billy idol on the cover of rolling stones magazine it looks like a diaper but we'll take it it's like a leather studded diaper you gotta start somewhere you gotta start somewhere 
But I also, and I also want to give a shout out to uh, the horror family. Uh, there's another webcast. There seems to be a number of webcasts about not even just spooky, but all things horror Orlando related. And horror family is one of them. Um, they've actually done some really, really cool stuff. Um, and actually they shared something the other day. Uh, apparently, I guess M. Night Shyamalan is coming out with a new movie. Uh, and I want to say, was it Phantasm that was offering tickets? Oh, I thought you were saying he redid Phantasm. And I was like, what? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, no I've never been more angry leaving a movie theater than I was for Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> a rage unknown to man. I knocked over one of those big ass trash cans that are like all iron rod. I was like, ah! I like rage knocked <laughs> it over because I was so bad. Oh. Um, is it you all? I was like, oh. Anyway, that's not horror related, except the horror that I <laughs> brought upon the world afterwards. You were horrified. That counts. I was indeed horrified. Scariest movie I've ever fucking seen. Yeah, but speaking of other conventions and stuff, the horror family has been doing a really great job because I know they just recently went to, uh, and they in Orlando, they had Villain Con they, or Villacon, apparently like a convention for villains, which is something we talked about that they should do like forever ago. Yeah, I actually almost trademarked a name for a villain convention about five years ago. I could have, could have been me, man. Could have been you know, me. It could have been. We sit on a lot of great ideas. We're like, wouldn't that be great that all of us sit there, drink, yeah. no, disassociate, and hide? They just steal them. <laughs> But no, so check out the horror family because they're actually doing a lot of stuff, especially with horror, uh, Halloween Horror Nights coming up um, and just their videos of some of the reviews of the cons that are going on locally and everything. They're a great webcast or podcast to check out. So horror family, check them out on YouTube. You know, if I could just go back to the the, the new movie that M. Night Shyamalan's doing. Yes. Um, his movies have taken a bit of a dive. I mean, he, he's they're, they're going up and down <laughs> okay. a little bit. I have but, to ask you, have we had more bad than good at this point? Um, he's about 50, 50. Honestly. Exactly. He's, so he's it, it, right it, at 50, 50, but which, which is a bigger risk going to see a movie that starts with from the mind of M night Shyamalan or Tyler Perry presents. Oh that, no. Yes. Yeah. I'll always sit through him. You know what? I sat through Conjuring 3. I'll sit through M. Night Shyamalan. No it problem. was real boring. I, I didn't get to it be on the terrible. podcast for that, but I was real sad about it. Like we were, you know, Robbie and I were like, yeah, it's going to be so much fun. And then I was like, oh, this was super fucking boring. I said it before and I'll say it again. It was an episode of Murder, She Wrote, but a little more horror movie. <laughs> it's honestly Annabelle Creation or whatever that most recent Annabelle one was a better Conjuring film. Hands down, No Holds Barred was a better oh. Conjuring film than Conjuring 3. It felt like it felt like a student film. Yeah. You know, going back to M. Night Shyamalan, it's like actually his elevator movie, Devil. I actually I didn't get to see it. But he, I, now he didn't direct that. That's actually something he produced. Really? Yeah, that was not oh. if, if I'm not. I could be I'll double check right now. Boris, are you still in the chat? Come on, you got this. Prove us right or wrong. Yeah, well, that's that's actually really interesting because uh, I actually I hated the movie at first, but upon more viewings, I was like, oh, OK, I'm OK with this. The Village, not so much. Devil, I actually. Liked. Yeah, no, he he produced it. But the director is John Eric Dowdle. Oh, shit. Sure. Well, but M. Night Shyamalan apparently also wrote it. Oh, OK. So. See, yeah. So, I'm oh, okay so he's with doing that. the Lucas thing. He's like, maybe I'm not the best director. Maybe somebody else should take over this for me. Yeah, yeah maybe. But the writing no, but I actually supposedly like very good. Last, I mean, what's, okay. what's the last movie uh, M. Night Shyamalan did? Okay. Unbreakable. Not even a debate. Un the entire series, though, I liked all of them. I will agree. Unbreakable is my top favorite. But yeah. second to that, and nobody's going to agree with me on this because it had bad marketing and this was not his fault. But Lady in the Water was a great fairy tale. He did fairy okay. tales really well, which I, I was like, it, he, so. can, he can that do was, fairy tales. Was... Bryce Howard Dallas's first movie, yes. I think. Bryce Dallas Howard? Bryce, Bryce Howard Dallas. Dallas? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, one backwards. of those. But she um, she was amazing in that film. It was really unique and interesting. It was amazing storytelling and pacing, but it wasn't a horror film. There was just one spooky thing in yeah. it. So they were like, M. Night, he only does horror, so make it a horror trailer. No, that's why it didn't do well. Make the fairy tale that it was meant to be, which gave me false hope for Avatar. <laughs> and then Eric also it's did bring up uh, Signs. Which yeah, signs yeah. does have the single greatest line of all of the <laughs> none movies. Of us, none of us are even mentioning Sixth Sense, which was like amazing. But was, that's, a, that's a given. That's super a super groundbreaking movie. But no, Signs has Vominos children, Vominos. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, help me remember. So it was Unbreakable, which hands down one of the best comic style films, like superhero films ever, ever. Yes. ever. Yes, yes. Not even yes. just in his universe, no. but any universe. And yes. then it was Split. 
No, okay, okay. Oh, and then it was okay. Mr. Glass. That's what it was. Un- what un- I, break, yeah. Cur- I liked all of those. To be honest, I liked all of those. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Fucking amazing. Oh my split, god. Split, yeah, no. Split was that caught everyone off guard. No one was prepared. Backup boy was like, I know, I said I'd never get in shape again. Here I am, and also crazy. And just how the fuck that guy didn't get like 10 Oscars for that role? McAvoy is not properly used. And I'm still sad because originally he was going to play Dream in the Endless show. Oh. And I guess he's not now. And I'm like, oh, it he was... would have been such a good, dream. I don't know, some unknown British actor or some shit. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Boris? Are you... <laughs> I feel like Boris Bor- is on IMDb ready to prove his Actually, right. no, <laughs> Boris actually just said, huh? I just rejoined what I missed. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just yelling your name into the ether. Boris, prove us wrong. <laughs> actually hold on we've got a very nice uh, helpful group out right now uh yeah other people are carly's never going to be over the last airbender apparently your reputation ever. is solid there ever who said that uh, that was christina <laughs> yeah yeah she sends me videos breaking down that movie because she knows <laughs> that i will randomly fall into a rant about that that's what happens when, when uh one of your closest dearest friends like kitty uh, allows you to rant about stuff you hate. Like, I can't believe they did this to me. <laughs> and it was personal. They specifically did it to Specific- piss you it off. It said at the very what? end, where it's like, thanks to the city of Georgia, or, you know, wherever city of Atlanta, it said, and fuck Carly Starr, specifically. That yeah. red-headed cryptid bitch. <laughs> the red-headed cryptid, I love that. I fucking love that so much. You know, actually, that reminded me, on the uh, on the Frill Frontal Nerdity podcast, or, what, what, yeah, podcast, they asked us to uh, name our favorite cryptid. It better be me, Rob. I sorry, I said the Loch Ness monster. I kind of. I, it's that's, not Mothman. I, I. That's what I said. said Mothman. Mothman, obviously. Thank Fucking you, Mothman. Yeah. dude. We need to do that costume for you. A Mothman? Yeah, sexy okay. Mothman with the legs. Okay, I'm mm. Mothman, sure. I'm I'm 100 in. Love it. We need a cryptid group for all of us, and I'll make you a Loch Ness monster costume, Rob. That's, that's okay. Honestly, you know, honest to God, the cu- the question mm. caught me completely off guard. And so, and, it, and then, and then I started going. Okay, wait. Now, what are considered like? Because I was, I was all geared up for Lovecraftian conversation. If they asked me my favorite elder oh. god, I could have pulled that out immediately. But they, well, asked I would like kids. to know. Tell the class oh. what is your favorite elder god. Well, I, I don't have that now. It's, it would just not, probably <laughs> well fail. I can't actually, remember you know, them, It's so. funny. The movie completely ruined the concept of Dagon, but it's really interesting all yeah. the same. I, I do appreciate so. Dagon. That is true. This will be an off the pod thing that we do again because I need to pick your brain on this, Rob. I, you got it. So, okay. <laughs> but actually, on, I, let me just double check if we have any last. Uh, no, 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 okay. And the chat is discussing amongst themselves. We so. do need to. Kitty needs to be on the show eventually, though, since she has that podcast. She's very Absolutely. into horror and she's a really cool librarian so she's got really lots of like librarian. horror yeah she's got lots of horror insight that i don't have horror books don't get nearly enough love these days no man. but she knows all about all of them she's giving books? me some amazing suggestions what are books what books are <laughs> yeah it's, what it's, do you do with books how do you download <laughs> yeah if it's not an audiobook people want nothing to do with it i know but Halloween shopping, Halloween hunting season is here. And I know July 4th is the official date for all of us to go nuts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, we go fucking insane. And it just, as we call it, code orange. You know, Mes- just- yeah, messaging each other like shaky cam footage. To make you look what I found. Mm-hmm. So right now, and I think the last show we talked about old time pottery, especially if you like vintage Halloween-y stuff, that's all really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. At home, always, at home is always like the mecca for uh and at home it's it's hard to find them because they're they're everywhere but like sorry i've got a uh, kita behind me trying to knock stuff down hi baby sweet babes what are you doing and at the same time i've got i've got a naked cat slithering through the background demos yeah. they're okay. so sweet rob cindy, cindy says you should have one no she doesn't yeah <laughs> oh i it's behind my computer i just have a little paw poking up from my desk in the wall like, hey. yeah. but uh, but yeah so this week uh we started seeing some stuff come out of michael's i mean it's not a lot it's more or less just the fall floral stuff so that's come out uh joanne's we actually saw they have their seasonal karenish stuff kind of out the uh harvest and blessings and gathering and and florals all again definitely the florals yeah all the florals uh Rob, what else have we seen I'm trying um to you know what i, I don't honestly start. what we've seen 
so far is a lot of recycling from last year. Yes. Um, I haven't seen anything truly like I haven't seen anything new yet from the stores that have their, their merch out yet. If you're everything, I've everyone who seems stuff. to have gotten their stuff early, just getting rid of old inventory from 2000. That part. And they've, they've done a reorder, which they probably ordered in October, but because of supply lines being interrupted yeah. from China, they didn't get until like February. And now they're releasing it because that's exactly what home Depot has done. Yes. Um, and they've re- the 12 foot skeletons already sold out, which duh, they've been well, utilized in such an amazing way that why wouldn't they someday, someday my, my unicorn, I'll catch it, but I am definitely have it in my shopping cart. I'm just waiting to get the money for it. There is an archway, which all lights up in that like mylar pretty lighting up stuff. That's all jack-o'-lanterns. And I saw it at zoo Tampa that I work at last year. And I was like, Oh my God, where did you guys get that? And they're like, it's just from home Depot. And I'm like, can I borrow it for the year? Or like, what are we doing with this mm-hmm. all year? Like, I need it just for me. That's so cool, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Home Depot, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't even just the, the 12-foot skeleton that they had last year. They actually have, like, a pumpkin-looking one where the rib yep. cage lights up. Yep, they're doing, doing they're on. they're throwing their hat fully into the game for this Halloween shit that they're like, oh, I guess we could be a Halloween destination. And the shit they're getting designed and made, they're going very medieval this year for their line. So it's very like super medieval stuff. Yeah. So if you're into that, like the giant swords and the angel's death and all that kind of stuff and dragons and everything, it's perfect for that. But they they have quality stuff. Like I have next to me, there's a used car lot, and they've had that damn horse out there in rain, sunshine, everything for five fucking years. And I am so tempted to jump the fucking fence and steal it because it's like two hundred dollars. But it's been out there and it hasn't rotted, it hasn't yep. fallen apart. It lasted through that that hurricane we had last week or whatever. Very yeah. impressive. That, that was so lame. We didn't have a fucking hurricane. I just like I was looking forward to some good sleep. Yeah. I don't want breath. a hurricane. I mean, I just want a good storm. I want a storm yeah. that says maybe Satan has joined our little hamlet, and this was the storm that brought him into it. You know, very witches of Eastwick style. But yeah. you know, instead, I got nothing. Yeah, nothing. Literally nothing. That was some bullshit. Oh my god! Will you stop hitting on the God damn it, Akita! All right, so I, I will take the dog. Give me puppy. Well, puppy you, wouldn't go even if we told her to. I know. <laughs> such a good puppy. She's a very good puppy, but she's like underfoot. The I'm nicest just, dog I think I've ever met. Crouching any minute. All right. Something interesting I saw on TikTok, actually, and I was unaware uh, was an actual thing. I didn't know people actually got their palms tattooed. Mm-hmm. That was the first time. And she, you know, she's a pinup model out in Dallas, but she had cherries tattooed on here. And I've never seen someone actually had their, I've seen everything else tattooed, you know, assholes, you know, whatever. Oh, the what. octo booty. Yeah. 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 No. And just, yeah, I've seen all that. But I've never seen their palm tattooed. I was like, huh. And it was interesting because, you know, and, and Carly has a story in a second, but it was really interesting because apparently it they last longer on women because, and she said, because men work with their hands. So work with their hands last. and so they don't what, last long what, on. What, is, what what i'll show you later rob we'll have an instructional video on how to do this for yourself at home yes with diagrams and red crayons all of that <laughs> Good. but no carly said something interesting that i actually was unaware of you know we have the tattoo show at spooky coming up yeah, so, I can't yeah. wait to see who's going to be there because now that it's opening up more, we're going to get a lot bigger talent. We had some really brave souls at the last one, but we're going to have a, I bet it'll be double the size it was for our last one. Yeah. Um, so you all remember hipsters and, oh, they did it first. And then the classic, put a bird on it. I have known no less than six different people to have birds tattooed across both of their palms. And then they'd be like, I don't know, man, just whatever the change is and be super dramatic and be like, oh, is there a bird? And I'm like, why are people tattooing <laughs> birds on their hands? It was really weird. But those are the only palm tattoos I've ever seen. And all of them are like, it's super original. No one's done it. And I'm like, I've yeah. met five other people oh. with bird tattoos on their hands. <laughs> Fucking weird. The cherries is more unique than the birds by yeah. far. I, yeah, and I thought it was really, really interesting. So it's like, I don't know if anyone out there has a palm tattoo. If you do, we'd love to see it. Drop a or, photo. 
yeah, drop a photo or like if if something that's something that I would get at Spooky. I could go and get a palm tattoo and not have to worry about anything all weekend. That actually do they would... offer asshole tattoos at Spooky? Just you know, oh, maybe great. maybe I, I want to be Cthulhu, uh, but instead of Octopussy or whatever that girl's name it's is, possible. She Octo. I've I've seen it. Octo, Octo booty. Yeah. I'll be Cthulhu booty. Oh, the terrors of the deep. The girl of Cthulhu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um. But yeah, so it's like I'm actually really interested in that. I didn't know you could actually tattoo. Palm, yeah. So yeah. Acor- according to Matt, Jesse James had the original palm tattoo. Oh. Which, when he says that, I don't know if he means uh, the the current uh, musician Jesse James or actually, you know, Jesse James the Western. I don't think Jesse James outlaw. is a musician. I think he's just a mechanic dude, the one who was married to yeah. Sandra Bullock, yeah. Kat Von D, and Sandra Bullock. Mm-hmm. I I swore he had no. Okay, no, I'm thinking of somebody else. The, I'm thinking of the guy from. Uh, have to oh, go well, back doesn't matter. a couple of jokes to like mention. Jesse James porn star? I'm Was thinking yeah, of Jesse. Sure. Okay, uh, you know, I was thinking of Jesse James Dupree. So that's there you go. Uh okay. Dimmy, I have to go back into about, you know, uh having a Cthulhu booty and having a tattoo like that. Remember yeah. that whole thing where it's like I stared into the void and the void <laughs> it's an asshole like tattoo of an eyeball with all the Cthulhu tentacles <laughs> out. <laughs> If anyone is going to get that, we will contribute. I'll give a dollar. Tattoo. I'll give a yeah, dollar if somebody I will wants definitely, to I will give you $20 tattoo. for that. Yeah, we will contribute if you get that tattooed. That's, yeah, You absolutely. have to videotape it, though. Oh, I have to say this. Why we're mentioning tattoos. I'm getting some new tattoos. I said I was done, but we all know how that goes. No, no that doesn't know. So I want to <laughs> point out that I am going to be uh, scheduled for a tattoo with gene13.tattoo. Um, wonderful human being that I met at Spooky via Chris was also on Face Off. She's extremely talented. And I'm going to have her do some uh, filler stuff, but a bunch of little ones of kitty cats and Halloween like treats. And I think maybe a Mimikyu because he's the most Halloween y of Pokemon ever. So. So I'll be up in Orlando, and when I am, let's try to go to dinner. That kind of thing. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Which who's the most Halloweeny Pokemon ever? Mimikyu. Interesting. Why are we gonna have a fight about this? Because it's no. not Gengar. That's basic, bitch. You know what? That's not basic. That's OG. No, it's basic. Okay, listen. He has such a bloodthirsty hate for Pikachu. He dresses up as him because he's jealous. But then he also is on a secret mission to actually murder Pikachu. We can get into Pokemon Corner, Rob. Let's go. All right, then fine. <laughs> I will raise I will raise that to Chandelure. Spooky okay, haunted I... chandelier Pokemon. Well, I like its I like its de-evolved versions. And then you got Pumpkin Boo, which is adorable. Yes, it's do. like the cute side. Yeah, but Mimikyu is my baby. Where's I'm Josh? Not... Where's Josh Barker? He'll settle this. <laughs> no, I actually there was something interesting I learned today. Have you guys heard about like the 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 fights people are getting in over Pokemon because of the Pokemon card? You guys heard about that? Yes. Oh my god! And Walmart's going to stop selling them because somebody got stabbed or some yes. shit. That's hardcore. People are fighting. They're stabbing people in parking lots. Look at these nerds getting Pokemon. some fucking cojones. By the way, uh, Big Daddy Mike just chimed in and asked, "Who's getting a butthole tattoo?" Apparently, Mike. it's me or anybody is the thing. I'm gonna. Whoever it is, we're co- we'll contribute, man. Yeah, we we're, we're just we're we're throwing down for it. Whoever wants the it. The void stared back. And, uh, yeah, the void stared back. I love that. Oh you, know, like, you know what? Even as a tramp stamp, just and the void stared back. Just as no, a tramp stamp. no, it's got to be the octo oh. booty, but it's Cthulhu booty. We're just mimicking what she did, but like, like yes, and because most people are like, oh, look at her. The thing goes all the way into her asshole, and I'll be like, yes, look into the void. <laughs> And then your soul is stolen hurt. by my asshole. I still don't want to think about terrors. how much that would hurt. <laughs> oh, it seems like it's probably real, real painful. Yeah. Real oh, that's got to be super painful. And yeah. super hard to keep clean, too. But Yeah, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. She does She does a bunch of shows in Tampa. She lives in, in Vegas, but she's always in Tampa because we've got all the strip clubs and all that shit. So yeah. Good for her. Good, literally good for her. We yeah. wish nothing but the most success for... Dija, blah, I just blah, blah. Show you guys this, this is it an octo booty? Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, baby. Go say hi. Kitty, if you're still watching the stream, look at this puppy. Yeah, no, she keeps trying to get under my chair. And I'm like, you're 70 pounds. You're not fitting under the But the most gentle giant, because when I came over, instantly did like the headbutt to my head yes. and like waited and did the, can I, can you pet me? And I was like, I, I love you, please. Be, yeah. be, I'm, I want to be that dog's godparent. 
She's no, she's very, very clingy. <laughs> I'll take it right here. Okay, so but uh, Rob, you have a game for us? Um, yeah, unless we want to do movie reviews first. Any, oh. any, any movie recommendations first before we, we get to our, our big <laughs> big game? The big game of the it's evening. not my game, is it? I think that game has been slightly retired. Well, it's, been, it's, it's trust me, after as we get a little bit close closer to the actual spooky, um, we'll, we'll bring it back. Yeah, and we need to make shirts that say that though. Spooky guests are dead. Yeah, I can, I can put those. Yeah, Dave Dent could hook us up. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. dare to wear clothing. Dare to yeah. wear clothing. Oh he, he yeah, could, he could help us out. Perfect. Do it. Do it. Absolutely. I Dave. want it in that same font though. Yeah, that same shade of orange. That's so nice. It's very Dave, te- you heard it's it. Fetching. It's fetching. <laughs> um. Okay, so. I had re- like I love a t- ton of different. Let me ask you guys this: subgenres of horror. Yes. There's ones that I love that are really weird. You guys know I'm not into Christmas. I yep. love Christmas horror. I don't know okay. why. I don't know what that's about. And then recently, I've fallen down a hole of like I really like Western horror, and I don't know what that's about either. But Western horror is really good. Like I've seen um, Headcount, which is a a, a native. Um, indigenous version yeah. of horror which is about the skinwalker and you never see anything about the skinwalker yeah, exactly. and then apparently what happened to that movie horns that was supposed to come out because that was a wendigo and that would have been really fucking cool i'm pretty sure wendigo is specific to the algonquin people sorry if i got that wrong um but i did and watch the x-men yes also that but it was specifically alpha flight so if we're gonna do this like if you're gonna be nerd and drop it on me you better drop it right it's alpha flight <laughs> no one no so what you no- think i didn't know we don't talk anyway. about an Alpha Flight. <laughs> we, shh, no one talk about Alpha Flight. We don't want them to hear us. We don't want the Canadians. <laughs> we've got enough Canadians down here. Don't encourage them. We don't need them. North Star in here jazzing things up with his pride. Pride Month is over. Anyway. Uh, yeah, X-Men and, and all of that is a whole separate podcast I could do. Uh, I saw The Cleansing Hour, which is really good. It's a little comedy, but a lot of demon possession. So I highly suggest it. I am, that's, that's, my, that's my genre is demon possession. I love exorcism. I think you're really uh, going to like this one. Um, and then I saw one the other day, because you know, you guys know I'm up drawing at all hours of the night. And I'm like, let me put on another horror film. Because those are what, that's what comforts me. You know, it doesn't give me nightmares. I watched a movie that I thought, I was like, this is going to be so fucking bad, but it was really enjoyable. It was called Blood Vessel. And I was super surprised. It was World War II. They're trying to go home. The U-boats are still bombing things, but everything's pretty much done. Hitler's been killed. And a a group of people who were on a hospital boat got bombed and they're out on the thing. They find a drifting ship um, and it's a Nazi ship. Really good special effects. Interesting storyline. Definitely about vampires. It's called fucking Blood Vessel. I mean, what do you want? But it was really fun and pacing. And it was more like super beefed up salem's lot nosferatu style vampires which we love i like i said the trip like the the picture of it the poster i was like oh this is gonna be cheesy and it was actually really fun i really liked it so that and cleansing hour and i'm trying to think of another one i watched sun it was okay that's so great um oh vicious fun demi you have to watch it as horror comedies go vicious fun is i'm in a horror comedy dale it's so good. It's a new one that Shutter just point out. Absolutely, okay. watch Vicious Fun. Oh, because oh, something I actually saw on Shutter the other day. Uh, something called Thirst, and I know there's like four or five different vampire movies all called Thirst. So I was like, okay, you know, let me see what this one's about. Now, the 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 premise was, and the description was something about uh, vampires and a gay ass zombie. And I'm like, all right, I'm in already. I'm curious. You so must link like, me. Right. This sounds like this sounds like literally a night at spooky. Yeah, and I'm just like, okay, uh, this is going to be funny. So this was uh, an Icelandic movie, actually. Um, and the Icelandic people, Spain, our boy, they know how to tell a good scary story. I only got about a half an hour into it because within the first half hour, I saw at least four, like, violent castrations of like <laughs> ripping dicks off so it's just no everywhere and it's like one floppy penis okay two floppy penises okay once you get to four in the first half hour i'm like okay maybe you want to reel it back a little bit. was so it like, made by an angry lesbian it might have been it might okay. have been okay. but yeah it's, if you're into that sort of thing and you want to see a bunch of like decapitated you know floppy <laughs> bloody penises check out thirst i don't want to see any penises at all Okay, yeah, like none. Just, that's why that's why Midsommar was a miss for me. I was like, it's too much ginger penis. I can't I, do I it. I just wanted to point something out. If you look at my screen real quick, hold on, see if I can do it. 
Uh, Matt just pointed out that the chair that I'm sitting on when it oh, fades... Oh, it looks like it? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I already... I saw that immediately. Yeah, it I looks like a manatee purpose. drinking out of the toilet. Yep, yep, it's terrible. I love it. All of it's very Florida and awful. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> well, oh, so you can't do that because I've been stuck on Inside by Bo Burnham. It's like, welcome to the internet. Have a oh, look God, around. Yeah, Bo Burnham, he's everywhere now. Uh, I, it's my new religion and I'm addicted to it. And it's like a siren song and I know I will rupture my body against those rocks but i'm still gonna do it it's very <laughs> very upsetting to me and i can't stop i get it i absolutely get it i mean oh. my penis isn't that for me so but mm -hmm. but if you're interested in something that uh, is about vampires and gay ass zombies and penis. i mean there's like a, a hookup gay ass like thing like in the very beginning and the next thing you know penis is flopping everywhere you know decapitated penises so it's like if that's your thing check out thirst did you watch Willy's wonderland not yet it's next on my list he doesn't say one fucking word in the entire film it was amazing Ooh, i love that Look, we have to we have to just admit here on this podcast i'm gonna take my glasses off to be real serious about this nicholas cage is reinventing a genre of horror yes he is on his fucking own well maybe with elijah wood because he's the one who's producing a lot of these films i can't wait for pig to come out i mean um, color sp out of space yes I so on good space and then watch Mom and Dad and Willy's Wonderland. All amazing Nicolas Cage films. I'm pretty sure it's... for Mom and Dad, they literally were just like, here's a lot of Coke. We don't have a script. Do whatever you want. Selma's got a script. You don't have a script, Mr. Cage. Just do whatever you just want. be Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Do what you yeah. feel. Do what you feel. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will recommend- your, your one recommendations of... for this week. I mean, Rob, what about you? You have anything you'd like to recommend? Um, yeah, I have two and let's see one of them. Okay, first of all, I do wanna, I, I don't wanna recommend it, but I'll just bring it up. Wellington Paranormal. That's the uh, the cop spinoff. Uh, of I have heard it's a very good um, spiritual sister to one of our I favorites. I think it's shit. I was not impressed in the slightest. Robbie thought, just her vagina just cinched up. I, I know, I like, know, I know. Honestly, I was like, okay, look, these were characters who were in five minutes of the movie and were funny for five minutes of the were movie. Were they the police officers? Yes. Okay, they're, yeah, the they're pretty funny. That are, that are kind of oblivious to the whole situation. It doesn't work for a whole show. Just is Rice Darby Davis or Rice Davis Darby or whatever is he in it? The swearwolf werewolf guy? Is he in it? Uh, I haven't seen him in the first episode. Mm. I might... have seen a trailer for something not related. That's another werewolf movie that that looks really good. That's a comedy, but that's okay. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate a, a separate view I, on that. I was just like, okay, I get what they're doing. It, it ultimately it's an X Files spoof. In the same way oh. that what we do in the shadows was kind of the okay. the documentary real world spoof. They took that idea, moved it over, just added X Files. Okay, and I. But just... if you're an X Files fan, well, do you think they'll enjoy this? There's were you an X Files fan? I was like, okay, with X Files. I was not a big right. fan. I'd but watch you... if it were on. But they, they, they I understand the diehards. It's yeah. not, and they, they, they straight up mentioned, yeah, we're like an X Files. You know, like uh, you're oh, like Scully, God. I'm Mulder. It's like it's not even subtle. They just so it's it meta. There. It's a bit meta. Yeah. Um, Dementia well, and is. Rob, I think you guys can. Uh, I just realized this. X Files is horror from mundanes. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Like for people who are true horror fans, X Files was like not even getting our pulse yeah, raised. We're like, like yeah, yeah, it's whatever. Right. Yeah. But when you need it in a dry spell, when you needed a good horror or sci fi story, yeah. X Files was always there for you, very reliable. Yeah. Okay, Rob, well, that's good to know. What but, are their movies, but the though? Good movie, and I know I'm sure you've seen it um, because it was also on Shudder, but Mayhem. So good. I saw it like two years ago, and it's amazing because Samara Weaving is definitely our new screen queen. Like, hail to Samara Wait, Weaving. So that was two years ago? Because I think I it was two. I, I swear to God, that would have been inspired by COVID. No, it ha it came out before COVID. Oh my Because I watched I watched it at like oh. the very beginning of when COVID. I was like, oh, what's this movie? Huh. It reminded me of the Belco experiment, but then it goes, no, no, we're our own film, and it oh, did no, no. really this was, good. This was fan didn't mean, don't think about it too much. As soon as you put any apply, you try to even slightly apply logic. It no science. Down. No yeah, science allowed. Don't do that. But it's it's just a great, fun, stupid, violent, bloody, just so. Just I, good stuff. I re because Samara Weaving is in that, and she's also in Guns Akimbo, and she's in Ready or Not, which I love Ready or Not. I know not all of us do, but yeah, I realized was... something about her that she did really funny because you'll hear her scream in Mayhem, 
she screams in a specific way and ready or not that I didn't even realize they did. And it blew my mind because they just keep showing you sacrificing a goat, sacrificing a goat, sacrificing a goat. She literally screams like a goat. She goes "Ah!" in it and makes a goat scream. She does that specifically to be the sacrificial goat in the movie. And I was like, I love her. I love everything she does. Babysitter. I was the first one to watch babysitter in our group. And I said, it was a great comedy horror. Yeah. Such a good comedy horror. Fantastic. Let us not talk about the sequel. (laughs) <laughs> I liked it. Whatever, Rob. We can fight about it. That's fine. But no, I, I did like the babysitter. That was fucking amazing. So yeah, no, I, I'm absolutely 100 percent with you. I gotta go watch Ready or Not again. But yeah, Ready mm. or Not was very uh, beautiful too. And how many of us with our weird aesthetic was like, I'd play that game. Like yes. all the games in the background, like, yeah, it's like say it's yeah. involved. Fucking bet. Let's do it. <laughs> fucking nerds. <All> right. <laughs> well, then in that case, let's go ahead and wrap up the show. And let's play another game of the another installment of the rotten tomatoes game folks invite your friends join share the everyone likes the rotten tomatoes game it's it's fun for the whole family is this how much percentage they have on rotten tomatoes rob i've been away for a while i've been away on holiday remind (laughs) me so here's how here's first of all here's how rotten tomatoes works it's a score aggregator but they they're not taking an average of the scores they're taking an average of just general, I liked it or I didn't like it. A thumbs up versus a thumbs down. It's that. Okay. So a movie that has a lot of universal appeal, whether or not it's a truly great movie, will have a very high ranking. Uh, something that is very divisive might be more in the middle, even if it's eventually considered a classic at some point. And then shit movies are still shit movies. So the, the example I always give... Um, do we all remember the Kevin Klein movie, Dave, where he plays the guy who pretended to be the president of the United States when the president yes. of the United States got... No, I've never seen this film. Okay, well, 1996. Wait, did it have... An, an... Sigourney Weaver was the... Uh, also... No, I was thinking of the other one that was the chick who was married to, to Tim Robinson? Tim Robinson? Oh, Susan Sarandon. Yeah. Not Susan... Oh, no, I'm not even thinking of the right one. What's Anne something? She was in that movie. Anne Hesh. You're thinking oh, of Wagner. No, I'm not thinking of Anne Hesh either. Okay, I'm Anne sorry. Bancroft. I... Which one? And Bancroft. Nope, not that either. Oh. Dementia, there was a movie where Robert Downey Jr. was a fucking serial killer. And it was like, it was in like dreams. in dreams. It's in dreams. Okay, it is in that. Yeah. It's the chick who's opposite of him in dreams is who I'm thinking okay. of. Anyway, right. well, anyway, sorry, Rob. Anyway. Yes. So a general, like a movie that everyone loves, even if it's not a truly great, great movie, will have a high ranking. That's what, that's just okay. what you have to remember. So you just have to think. Okay. Do a so lo- it's personal it, opinion. If you brought a hundred people into a room, how many people would say they, they'd vote for it versus they'd vote say I don't want to watch? It. Well, I hope I'm good for this because when you work in theme parks, as long as I have, it's not what you like in a show. What will the yep. guests like? Yeah. Yep. What do the guests? Does this appeal to the guests, to the basic bitches of America? I'm talking to you. So this is going to be the Lance Hendrickson tribute episode. <gasps> so yes. I've pulled I'm a bunch of his movies for it, and we're going to talk. We're going to play Rotten Tomatoes with. Lance Hendrickson film. So number Rob, one. Well, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt you just to say, can we all give Rob a round of applause for putting so much of this together and doing this? So any people, people, yes, a round of applause. People who are in the chat room, give Rob that love. Rob, Rob, you're the best Rob. Okay. All right. Well, if I had my tiny swipe. hands, I'd give him the tiny hands clap. I can do this. You. That's all. But I've got a sports bra on. So it's not really that exciting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Still exciting. Um, okay. Yay. So, this is how you do it, Rob. We're going to do the whole uh, A to Z. Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> number one. Tattoo. Yes. Number one. One Somewhere. of his earliest movies, Damien Omen 2. Oh. Now. Rotten Tomatoes is did think about what the critics scored this. Do they give critics it score that low? I'm gonna say critics scored low. that low. Which low? Because the, so, the omen was like a masterpiece. But then so omen I, two, nobody got it. Yeah. Nobody so got it. Omen nobody two understood score it. of one to a hundred. Where does this rank on Rotten Tomatoes? Twenty seven. I'm gonna say thirty eight. Thirty eight. Chat. Do you have again? It's a number between one and a hundred. So anyone yeah. in the chat? Twenty seven for me. Thirty eight for Dimmy. Yeah. Okay. And let's just see if anyone in the chat's playing. There seems to be a bit of a lag. 61 from Eric. Okay, Eric. Huh. Are you cheating, uh, Eric? Because you Allison can text me directly. Allison gives us 35. Hello, Allison. Hi, Allison. Hi, Allison. Will, 45. Will, what up, Will? All right. So Will gets the point here. Price is right. Come on down. Damien the Omen 2 is certified rotten at 44%. Yeah. 
travesty absolute fucking travesty i like all of those films to be I honest too, except the for the remake the remake is unforgettable who the fuck was even in the remake boris are you there um i can tell you it was uh <laughs> Leb, <laughs> Leb Schreiber. boris are you there <laughs> boris are you there can you hear me boris <laughs> All right, so that's so. Will, congratulations, you got a point. But so actually, number, no, thank you for reminding me because that's I gotta get Lance Henriksen to, to sign Omen Omen Two stuff. Yeah. Now it was a smaller role, but I still wanted to bring it up. Um, he wasn't the star. He had again supporting yes. role in the Terminator. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he was. So where does the rotten? Where does the Terminator where is one of the Terminator highest fall? rated films of all time. Like it's mm-hmm. one of the most universally loved films of all time. So I'm gonna say it's. 97 percent took my answer i'll go 92 <laughs> and on. real quick amy just chimed in and let us know that big daddy mike is falling asleep while holding his phone oh <laughs> amy thank you so sweet so bless <laughs> taking care right, of so him we've got more 92s more 92s uh 93 well carly gets this one Bitch. the terminator is the <laughs> rare one hundred percent. I knew it. Fresh. It's so fucking like it was one of the best, highest rated films of all time ever. If there is a bad review out there for it, it there's at least another hundred that are making up for it's it. It's been scrubbed yeah. from the internet, and those people yeah. were killed, and their Pretty lying and generation yeah, like was killed. In a fucking ditch. All they right, literally so... traveled back in time and killed all the people who made bad reviews. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, on Boris, theme. Lance Hendrickson was originally supposed to play the Terminator. I, I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> Boris, don't lie to us. I know Come that on. Arnold was originally supposed to play uh, the good guy role. And then yeah, he said, Bean. Yeah, he was going to be the well, Michael Bean role originally. The but then he basically said, No, 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 no. Let, you, you got, I'm, I, I'm not indestructible, or I'm too indestructible to go against the Terminator. I have Sorry, to be the Terminator. just remembering, Boris, I hope you're online for this. Wasn't Bill Paxton briefly in that film as well? Yes. Yeah, he was the one who stole. Like he's like, give me your outfit. Yeah, and all that the clothes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, <laughs> all right. So number three on the on the on our question and answer or our quiz, aliens, aliens with an S. Eighty nine percent. It was highly reviewed, but not like the highest. Not like fucking. And Mike, M- Mike is confirming that. Uh, I think he's confirming that Lance Hendrickson was going to be the Terminator. So I thought Mike was asleep. I'm oh. so confused. He's awake now. She probably threw something at him. So we got oh. 100%, per, 100% from Mike, 85 from Will, 85 from Christina, 84 from Eric. Carly, what did you say? 89. 89. 81. 81? Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, actually, in the chat, Allison would get this at 95. Aliens is fresh at 97%. Damn! Get it, Allison. Yes. Okay. Touche. All right. And so next, staying within the franchise, Alien 3. Oh, yeah. No, that one got, I'm going to say 63%. Which is sad because I actually like that one. I love that fucking film. But then when I found out, everyone's like, you like that movie? I also like the one afterwards with Sigourney Weaver. I like that one too. Sorry, like it. Whatever. Nona Ryder, yep, absolutely loved it. You know what's uh, weird is Prometheus is is streaming almost everywhere, but not Covenant. I was trying to like go down a hole of watching all the Alien films, and not yeah. all of them are streaming. That's not acceptable. If you're gonna do one, you got to do the whole franchise. Yeah. Exactly. Just spend the extra five dollars and get the yeah. rest of the franchise. Like, oh, HBO yeah. Max. Every can be stuck with you. Dimension, did you have a score? Oh shit. Um, that's a tough one. Seventy-three. Actually, I'm probably too high on that. I said 63? What did did. I say? Okay. And it looks like Will gets this one again. So, Will, you're currently the leader. Alien 3 was rotten at 45%. Okay. Yeah, I knew it was going to be See, we were throwing some love on that, Demi. You and I were both like, but I love that. It's so gritty. The cinematography is beautiful. Like the Mm -hmm. color. Lovecraft, that's 100% me. So, yeah. All right. And now we don't discuss this one earlier. I consider it one of the best vampire movies ever, Near Dark. Oh, okay. Which I think I'm going to watch again tonight. Yeah. Uh, Near Dark, Rob? currently. What was that? What year? Uh, 86, I want to say. Yeah, complete gonna... 80s vampire movie. Very dark. I'm but... going to say people didn't get it, though, and it was a 58%. God, she's good. Um, I'm going to say 47. 47, 50. All right, so let's see. Near Dark, yeah, you guys, that's right. But okay, give us scores, chat. Chop, chop. We got places to be. 
I don't. It's Sunday night. And I, I mean, I, I've got so much to do all the work. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I did make a Dolly Parton dress this week, though, guys. For- Allison, oh, you need to see Near Dark. You people, okay, well. I have it on my list, Rob. I officially have not seen it, but I know that it was misrepresented. Uh, Carly, what score did you give it again? It's a 58. 58. Will is by far the leader tonight. I'm cheating. Near Dark Will. was 82 percent. Will Thank actually God. said 57 like- or 60. He said 69. No, Will- Near Dark was 69. Will, yeah, what's up, buddy? So no, it was it it got pretty well acclaimed uh, for the performances mainly. I know Adrian good. Pascar is the, yes. the lead yeah. was uh, very good, and then Lance was just fucking unbelievable. You know what? It's on Shutter. And, again, and Rob, Paxton. I'm making a dedication to you. As soon as we end this, I'm gonna watch it. Bill Paxton, yeah, arguably Bill Paxton best perf- one of the. He was a total psycho in this. He's really. You don't good. think he was great when he was a giant turd in Weird Science? Actually, I would say if I if I had I'd say Simon in True Lies is my favorite thing he's ever done. Oh, I loved him in Frailty. Wasn't he in that? Am I I'm making that up? He was. No, he was in Frailty. Talk, he was yeah, the dad. One hundred percent in that. I loved him in Frailty. So good God, that movie's so good. All right. I so know. next on the list is Alone in the Dark Two. Uh, the sequel to a video game movie, which is one of the worst movies of all time. Look, I'm going to stop you right now. The movie was so bad, there were only two official reviews for it. Well, uh, hold on. Wait a fucking second. There was even a movie for that? Oh, yeah. Alone in the Dark. That had, I think, the original one, and it was one of the worst rated. It, it killed, well, it didn't kill Tara Reid's career. 14%. There, uh, there's no score for it because it's there, there, there is, it's, again, it didn't even get official reviews because it was so trash. Rob, you bother. Fucking... I thought it'd be funny to mention. Okay, Tara yeah. Reed. Okay, I remember now. I remember we yeah, actually saw the original Alone in the Dark. Yeah, Tara right. Reed. It was again when she was I've like, never seen any of those, but I do have to say another one that shares a similar name. Um is that it, that uh Del Toro film. Are you is it oh, what is, oh, don't get me started on Don't Be Afraid of the Dark? I like that movie. Do you not like that film? You're at, you're you're fired. That's it. We're done. No. I liked it. I thought it was fun. In 1973. I haven't seen that one. I'm I'm born in 82, baby. I never saw that fucking movie. One, one thing I want to throw out though, Alone in the Dark, the original one. My favorite. There was a review for the original. Like the this is Alone in the Dark too. It, it, that was a TV movie, right? I don't know. No, these were these were theatrical releases. Yeah, this was ah. the uh, I think Uve Bowl in the theater say it all, but the original Alone in the Dark, some like the best review of it said this movie should have been called Alone in the Theater. That's yeah, <laughs> it's true. So but okay. yeah, that's a read. Oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah, Tara Reed is an anthropologist. Okay, right. yeah, let's buy that. Okay. So that's like when Denise Richards was a nuclear was physicist yeah, for James that. Bond. And her name was Christmas yeah. Jones. She should that's like a Okay, everybody's fired. The yeah. entire podcast, yeah. everything, the <laughs> live cast, whatever it is, we're fired, everybody. Yeah. Okay. So last the last uh on our list of Lance Hendrickson classics. Oh, it's gotta be Jennifer's body. <gasps> okay. This is not fair. I know it's got a terribly low score, like 32 is what I'm going to say. I love that fucking film, I though. Like I love that fucking movie. It was underrated. Where, who, wait, who the fuck was he in that film? How am I forgetting him? Just real quick, Boris, actually, I don't think there's an official score for Hellraiser, Hellworld. Again, it was just too... <laughs> Yeah, sorry, he man. is going to be at the con, though, right? Maybe I'll yes. redo my Madam Hellraiser. Now everybody's you- done it. I did the first pinup version of it. Suck my dick. I did it That's with right. dementia. That's right. We did a panel. All right. So I'm getting 53, 56, 27, 27 227s. Yep. No, I said 23. You said 23? I did. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like our winner is still winning. Fuck you, Will. Fuck no, you, wait. Will. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I ju- Amy, Amy got one point. To- Yay, Amy. Will's still the winner. Oh. Uh, Jennifer's body was certified rotten at 45%. Oh, shit. I'm glad it was higher because honestly, that film was really fun and good. I really you liked it. I just love when she sets her fucking tongue apart. She's like, I'm a god. I'm so fuck. <laughs> Feminist demon films, that's a whole subgenre that there's not a lot of. That's true. That's true. I like that. All that's right. True. Well, that yeah. is the game. Will, congratulations. All right, well, Tell all right Will, we bow to you. Good job, Will. Yeah. Okay. Um, but before we, we, we bow out, uh, we want to give everybody an opportunity to, uh, to let everyone know where they can find them on the internet. So, Carly, where can people find you on the internet? I have a lovely OnlyFruits account. And if you really love me, you'll go to Starly Sinful VIP. 
and you will subscribe. I have a lovely Velma and Daphne video coming out this week, which will be very fun. Um, also, I am on Instagram at Starly Spellbound and Spellbound Designs, so I can do anything you need. You need the spicy, you need the wholesome. I've got all of it. I am a costume designer by trait, so let me know. I'm almost booked for Halloween, so get a hold of me ASAP. Yes. Rob, what about you? I'm not important. I got nothing. Rob, this, you're so this important. Is this is it right here, folks. Just subscribe to the only, the, the uh, not only fans, the. Um, <laughs> subscribe to my only fans, but yeah, yeah. Yes. feed me. That, trust fans. me, that one's going to be really disappointing. My only fans would be really disappointing. Really. I feel like it's you in like a smoking jacket. I have one. With, I think that's you. Yeah, I remember it, but it's just you and like you just keep crossing and uncrossing your legs with no pants on. You can see it, right? It's like a vision and different, different like songs play up. And you read very slowly, like Henry Cavill did for The Witcher, which was like, oh God, okay, no, this, okay, this is going to happen now. And I, no, no. You're welcome. I'm an You're idea welcome. lady. Oh, you uh, hey, you know what? Find me on TikTok at Caffeinated Hero. Yes. Oh, we need I'm, to refollow each other since I've been banned three fucking times. Yeah, your accounts are just. She's too hot for TikTok. I have cleavage. I showed this much cleavage and TikTok goes, no. <laughs> yeah but um yeah me uh the con mother facebook.com slash con mother y'all know where to find me blah 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 yeah love the con mother she's got amazing advice she's got really good tips like stuff that i as a professional costume designer cannot put into words she does very eloquently and tells you steps yeah, one through ten to get your shit together this is how you do it and then she also puts together an amazing fucking resident evil costume out of nowhere well, because and looks like so hot only because of people like you. That's it. Because you guys keep you guys keep me on my toes. Well, them titties. That was wonderful. Thank you for everyone in the chat. Thank you for for yeah, thank you for everyone coming by. In the chat. For everyone who watched this the video replay. Thank you. Keep your taints clean. Taint health is very important. July is National Taint Health Month. Look into the so, void, and the void will look back. That's right. <laughs> All right. On that note, we can't we can't okay. top that. And so our official spooky greeting. So. Bye. Thank you. All of this. Yep. Bye. Bye, guys.